Marshall takes on Appalachian State, 7.30 p.m. Eastern kickoff this Thursday. The Appy State Mountaineers are minus 7.5, totals 58. And if you like the thundering herd of Marshall and an upset on the road here, they're plus 250 for some money line cash. Now we went 2-1 and one in our three college football tier package picks on my BrockPage.com website this past week. And if you want to see which one of these free YouTube picks on this video that I'm actually betting on personally, there's only one way to do that, and that's to sign up for my college football premium tier picks on my website. And once again, that's BrockPage.com. Now, Marshall gave up 42 points to East Carolina this past week in a loss. The Herd has failed to cover in their last two straight, and their defense is giving up way too many yards on the ground. They're allowing nearly 200 yards a game rushing. They're taking on an Appalachian State team who can certainly score points. The Mountaineers are averaging over 33 points a game, and they're also averaging 6.6 .6 yards per play. Cameron Peoples is rushing for 6.5 yards a carry and has five touchdowns on the ground. Meanwhile, defensively, Appalachian State is holding their opponents to just 109 yards a game rushing. Now, total-wise, Marshall has gone 3-0 and to the over thus far in the season. I'm going to lean toward the Appalachian State Mountaineers, minus 7.5, and, and the over 58. Next ball game, Middle Tennessee State versus Charlotte, 6.30 p.m. Eastern kickoff this Friday night. The Charlotte 49ers are minus 2.5, totals 56 and a hook. Now, Charlotte beat a pretty tough Duke team in their season opener, 31-28. The 49ers are currently 2-1, and one, and they successfully covered the number twice during that stretch. Charlotte's strength is their pass defense. They're in the top 10 in the country in defense at time of possession, and they're also holding their opponents only 139 yards a game through the air. Defensive end Marquise Watts has three sacks on the year, along with 27 total tackles. They're taking on a Middle Tennessee program who lost their last two straight, and they struggled offensively in those losses. The Raiders are rushing for just 54 yards a game on the ground. They're also ranking 108th in the entire country in offensive time of possession. Total-wise, Middle Tennessee's 2-0 to the under in their last couple of games. Charlotte's 3-0 to the under in their last three themselves. Give me Charlotte minus 2.5. And the under 56 and a hook. Next game. Wake Forest, Virginia, 7 p.m. Eastern start time on Friday. The Virginia Cavaliers are minus four, total 67. The Cavaliers allowed 59 points to UNC this past weekend. The Cavaliers are 113th in the nation in rush defense as they're allowing over 200 yards a game on the ground. They're taking on a Wake Forest. Forest team, who's 3-0 thus far in the season. They're coming fresh off a 21-point win over Florida State. This Wake Forest defense is led by Kalen Carson and Travion Red, who each have a pair of interceptions already from the secondary. Now, total-wise, Wake Forest is currently 3-0 to the under in their three contests on the year. Meanwhile, Virginia saw two out of their three ball games on the season stay under the line themselves. I'm going to lean toward the Wake Forest Demon Deacons plus four and the under 67. Next ball game, not our big screen, but it is going to be Liberty versus Syracuse, 8 o'clock Eastern kickoff. The Liberty Flames are minus six, totals 52 and a half. Now the Flames do have a handful of guys on the injury report. They've also been fairly untested this year going up against the likes of Campbell, Troy, and Old Dominion. They're taking on a Syracuse squad who's won two of three thus far in the season, and that includes a 20-point win over the Ohio Bobcats in the opener. This Orange defense, top three in the country and fewest yards allowed per play. They played pretty well defensively this year. They're also holding their opponents to just 63 yards a game on the ground. Michael Jones is leading the team with 28 total tackles on the defense. When it comes to the scoring in this one, both teams 
are 2 and 1 to the under. Give me Syracuse plus 6 and the under 52 and a half. All right, next ball game, Saturday games. Boise State versus Utah State, 12 p.m. Eastern start time this Saturday, which I believe is 9 a.m. on the West Coast. Sounds weird, but anyway, the Boise State Broncos are minus 9, total 65. The Broncos have lost two of three to start the season. They're 121st in offensive time of possession. This Broncos offense has also struggled to run the football. They're gaining just 67 yards a game on the ground. They're taking on a high-powered Utah State offense who scores 41 points a game and passes for over 355 yards a game through the air. Devin Tompkins has a staggering 454 yards receiving already, along with three scores. Meanwhile, Brandon Bowling averages 16.5 yards a catch himself, along with three touchdowns as well. Total-wise, Utah State saw their last two outings both get over the number. Meanwhile, Boise State saw two out of their last three get over the line themselves. I'm going to lean toward the Utah State Aggies plus nine in the over 65. Next game, LSU, Mississippi State, 12 o'clock east. The LSU Tigers are minus two and a half, totals 56. LSU's banged up right now. A lot of guys on the injury report. They've also failed to establish a respectable run game this year. The Tigers are rushing for just 86 yards a game, and that ranks 120th in college football. They're taking on a Mississippi State team who has one of the better run defenses in the country right now. The Bulldogs are allowing only 73 yards a game on the ground, and they rank in the top 10 in defensive time of possession. Linebacker Jet Johnson has 21 total tackles and a forced fumble. Meanwhile, offensively, quarterback Will Rogers is completing 75% of his passes for nearly 1,100 yards already. Now, when it comes to the scoring, Mississippi State's season opener did manage to get over the posted number. Meanwhile, LSU saw two out of their three contests this year get over the line themselves. Give me the Mississippi State Bulldogs plus two and a half in the over 56. The next ball game, not on our big screen, but it is going to be Miami. Uh, there it is. Miami, Ohio versus Army, 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Army's eight and a half, total 51. Black Knights are 3-0 and to start the season. Top three in the nation in rushing. The Black Knights are gaining over 330 yards a game on the ground. They're taking on a Miami defense who gave up 49 to Cincy in their uh, season opener. Red Hawks are allowing nearly 30 points a game and over 150 yards per contest on the ground. Total-wise, two out of Miami's last three ball games got over the line. Army's 3-0 and to the over themselves. Give me Army minus 8.5, over 51. Next matchup. It is going to be Missouri versus Boston College, noontime east. The Missouri Tigers are minus 2.5, totals 59. Mizzou's failed to cover the point spread in all three of their contests. They're also struggling to stop the run. 127th in the nation in rush defense. The Tigers are also allowing nearly seven yards per play. They're taking on a Boston College offense who averages over 41 points a game. And they rank in the top 25 in yards per play. And despite the season-ending injury to quarterback Phil Yurkovic, the Eagles are gaining 205 yards a game rushing. I think BC gets the job done here with the run game. Give me Boston College plus two and a half, under 59. Next matchup, it is going to be Notre Dame versus Wisconsin, 12 o'clock Eastern start time. Wisconsin's minus five and a half, total 46 and a hook. Badgers are throwing for just 175 yards a game. They're also uh, a little bit banged up. Several guys on the injury report. They're taking on a 3-0 Notre Dame squad. Who's doing a fine job passing the football. Jack Cohn has thrown for eight touchdown passes and over 825 yards already. His favorite target's been tight end Matt Mayer, who averages over a dozen yards per reception and has three touchdowns. Give me Notre Dame plus five and a half. 
and the over 46 and a hook. Next matchup, it is going to be Ohio versus Northwestern, 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Northwestern's minus 15, totals 47 and a half. The Wildcats have yet to cover a point spread this season. One and two straight up through three ball games as well. The Wildcats have struggled offensively. They rank 100th in Division I in offensive yards per play. They're also taking on an Ohio team who allows just 182 yards a game through the air. Bryce Houston's got 26 total tackles from that linebacker spot. Ohio saw their last two straight ball games both get over the number. Northwestern, 2-1 to the over in their last three themselves. Give me Ohio plus 15 in the over 47 and a half. Next contest, SMU versus TCU, noontime east. The TCU Horned Frogs are minus 10, total 64. TCU's failed to cover in both of their contests thus far in the year. Failures to cover against the likes of Cal and Duquesne. This Horn Frog defense is also allowing nearly 6.5 yards per play. They're taking on a 3-0 SMU program who does just fine offensively. The Mustangs are averaging over 43 points per contest, and they rank in the top 15 in passing. Tanner Mordecai is completing 73% of his passes for over 1,000 yards already. And even more impressive, the quarterback's thrown for 16 touchdown passes already. Now, total-wise, two out of TCU's three ball games this season got over the posted total. Give me SMU plus 10 in the over 64. Next ball game, Texas Tech versus Texas Longhorns, 12 o'clock east. The Texas Longhorns are minus 8.5, total 61 and a hook. Now the Longhorns may have a weak spot defensively. They're 105th in the country in rush yards allowed. This Longhorns D is also allowing over 5.8 yards per play. They're taking on a Texas Tech program who's in the top 15 in the nation in offensive yards per play themselves. Wideout Eric Ezukanma has 16 grabs for 350 yards already on the season. The junior from Fort Worth is also averaging 22 yards per reception. Meanwhile, defensively, the Red Raiders are allowing only 54 yards a game on the ground. When it comes to the total on this one, the Longhorns saw their last two straight ball games both get over the number. I'm going to lean toward the Texas Tech Red Raiders plus eight and a half and the over 61 and a hook. Next ball game, not on our big screen, but it is going to be um, San Jose State versus Western Michigan, 2 o'clock east. Western Michigan's minus three, total 63. Uh, could potentially be a letdown spot for the Broncos. The Western Michigan defense is 121st in yards allowed per play. They're allowing over 6.7 yards per play as well. And that could potentially be bad news for Western Michigan backers because San Jose State is throwing for over 315 a game. Nick Starkell's thrown for 937 yards and six scores. But oddly enough, two out of these teams' last three contests both stayed under the line respectively. Give me San Jose State plus three and the under 63. Next ball game, another one not on the big screen. Toledo versus Ball State, 2 p.m. East. Toledo is minus four and a half, numbers 56 and a hook. And following a near win over a sluggish Notre Dame team a few weeks ago, the Rockets laid an egg against a very poor Colorado State program. The Rockets are struggling rushing the football. They're 111th in the country in rush yards per game. They're also 129th in offensive time of possession. They're taking on a Ball State program who successfully covered the point spread in six out of their last 10 meetings with Toledo. Linebacker Jalen Thomas leads the team in tackles with 23 of them. And total-wise, two out of Ball State's last three ball games did stay under the line. They're also 7-3 to the under in their last 10 meetings with Toledo. Give me Ball State plus 4.5, under 56 and a hook. Next matchup, another one not on the board. Washington State versus Utah, 2.30 p.m. East. The Utah Utes are minus 14 and a half, numbers 55. 
The running Utes have failed to cover the point spread in all three of their ball games this season. Two-game losing streak currently for Utah as well. The Utes are struggling a bit to stop the run. They're 97th in the country in rush defense. And although they've struggled in several different spots this season, this uh, Cougar defense has, uh, on the other side of things, this Cougar defense has four interceptions already. Now, total-wise, Utah's 2-1 to the over thus far in the season, 6-2 and two to the over in their last eight meetings with Wazoo. I like Washington State plus 14.5 and, and the over 55. Next game, Clemson, NC State, 3.30 p.m. East. The Clemson Tigers are minus 10, totals 47. Clemson's failed to cover the point spread in all three of their ball games this year. They're also struggling to move the football. 102nd in the country in pass yards per game. DJ Ui Ungalale is completing only 59% of his passes for a buck 58 a game. The quarterback's got just one touchdown pass, and he's been sacked seven times. Clemson's taking on an NC State squad who's averaging over 33 points a game. Running back Zonovan Knight is averaging nearly nine yards per carry and has nearly 300 total yards of rushing on the season. Meanwhile, defensively, the Wolfpack has four interceptions already. When it comes to the number in this one, two out of NC State's three contests on the season stayed under the line. Clemson's 3-0 to the under themselves. Give me NC State plus 10 and the under 47. Next ball game: Colorado State versus Iowa, 3.30 p.m. Eastern start time. The Iowa Hawkeyes are minus 23, totals 44 and a half. The undefeated Hawkeyes have successfully covered the point spread in all three of their victories. The rush defense is off. Uh, the, the rush defense has been dominant. I'm trying. They've been that impressive. I can't even talk. Just 81 yards a game they're giving up on the ground. Joe Evans and Lucas Van Ness each have three sacks apiece. Meanwhile, linebacker Jack Campbell has 25 total tackles, a sack, and a scoop and score. I was taking on a Colorado State team who lost two games already, and they struggled to move the football. The Rams are 97th in offensive yards per play. And when it comes to the total... Colorado State's 2-0 to the under in their last couple of ball games. I was 3-0 to the under for the entire season. Give me Iowa, minus 23, under 44 and a half. Next ball game, Illinois, Purdue, 3.30 p.m. East. Purdue's minus 11, totals 55 and a half. The Boilermakers have done a real nice job throwing the football. David Bell has 21 catches for 319 and three scores. Now, the wideout is currently in concussion protocol, so keep an eye on him, although I do think uh, he is going to play. They'll make sure uh, he gets his time. Meanwhile, tight end Payne Durham, 17 grabs, 203, three scores himself. The Boilermakers are in the top 15 in offensive time of possession. They're taking on an Illinois squad who just can't move the football. They're 105th in yards per play. They haven't scored over 17 points in a couple of uh, – in a couple of ball games here. Meanwhile, defensively, they're giving up a ton of yards through the air. 321 pass yards a game they're allowing thus far. When it comes to the number, Illinois 3-1 to the under thus far in the season. Purdue's 3-0 to the under themselves. Give me Purdue minus 11 in the under 55 and a half. Next matchup. It is going to be Iowa State versus Baylor. And that's a 3.30 p.m. Eastern start time. Iowa State's minus 7, totals 48. The Cyclones have uh, one heck of a defense. They're leading the country right now in fewest yards allowed per play. Aishim Young has a pair of interceptions along with 15 tackles. Meanwhile, linebacker Jake Hummel has 26 total tackles and a sack. Iowa State's holding their opponents only 143 yards a game passing. They're taking on a Baylor squad who failed to cover against Texas uh, State in their season opener. Bears also rank 100. I'm sorry, the Bears rank 64th in pass yards allowed per game. Uh, State's 3 0 to the under thus far in the season. Give me the Cyclones minus 7 and the under 48.
Next ball game. It is going to be Kent State versus Maryland, 3.30 p.m. East. Maryland's minus 14, total 67. The 3 0 Terps have played some really good defense early in the season. They're allowing only 13 points a game, and they hold their opponents to just 88 yards a game on the ground. Sam Okoyanonu has four sacks already, along with a dozen tackles. This Terrapin secondary also has four interceptions. They're taking on a Kent State team who really doesn't pass the ball all too well. They're passing for just a buck 66. And they rank 114th in offensive time of possession. Quarterback Dustin Crum has been sacked 11 times, has thrown only two touchdown passes through three games. Total wise, the Golden Flashes are 3 0 to the under. Maryland saw two out of their three ball games stay under the line themselves. I like Maryland minus 14, under 67. Next ball game, Louisville, Florida State, 3.30 p.m. Eastern start time. The Louisville Cardinals are minus two and a half, number 62. The Cards are on a two-game winning streak. Big victory over UCF last week. Louisville scoring 32 points a game, and they're led by quarterback Malik Cunningham, who's thrown for over 730 yards and rushed it for nearly 210. They're taking on a winless Florida State team, who's 116th in the nation in pass defense. Meanwhile, offensively, they're really not a huge threat to throw the football, they're averaging less than 180 yards a game through the air. Now, total-wise, the Knolls went 2-0 to the under in their last two contests. Louisville saw two out of their last three stay under the line themselves. Give me Louisville, minus two and a half, and the under 62. Next ball game I have for you, it is going to be Rutgers versus Michigan, 3.30 p.m. East. Michigan Wolverines are minus 18 and a half, numbers 51 and a hook. Now Michigan has been dominant on both sides of the football, but uh, I'll tell you what, it's this uh, rushing attack that's really turning some heads. The Wolverines are currently leading the NCAA in rush yards per contest, and of course, they're leading the likes of Air Force, Army, and Navy, teams that all they do is run the football. Now Blake Corum, he's touched it 48 times, for 407 yards and seven scores on the ground. The sophomore running backs also averaging eight and a half yards a carry. Meanwhile, defensively, Aiden Hutchinson has three and a half sacks and double digit tackles from that defensive end position. The Wolverines are holding their opponents to just 176 yards passing per game. They're taking on a Rutgers team who's been fairly untested uh, for the exception of the Syracuse game. They've garnered victories over the likes of Delaware and Temple. This Rutgers offense also ranks 108th in yards per play. Now, leading rusher Isaiah Pacheco, he's averaging only 3.4 yards a carry. When it comes to the scoring in this one, uh, Rutgers' last seven head-to-head -head contests with Michigan, oddly enough, went over the number. The Scarlet Knights are also 2-0, uh, I'm sorry, 2-1 to the over- uh, thus far in the season, give me Michigan minus 18 and a half in the over 51 and a hook. Uh, next ball game, it is going to be Texas A&M versus Arkansas, 3.30 p.m. East. The Aggies are minus five and a half, totals 48. Texas A&M failed to cover against the Colorado Buffaloes. They scored just 10 total points in that near loss to the Buffs. The Aggies' leading receiver is tight end Jalen Weidermeyer, who's averaging only 47 receiving yards a game and has no touchdowns. Now, the Aggies are taking on a 3-0 Arkansas squad who successfully covered the number in all three of their victories. This Arkansas roster is relatively healthy, and they certainly know how to run the football. They're in the top 15 in offensive yards per play, and they have 11 rushing touchdowns on the ground. Matter of fact, the Razorbacks are rushing for over 280 yards a game. Meanwhile, defensively, the Razorbacks are in the top 10 in fewest yards allowed from scrimmage. Now, total-wise, Arkansas has gone 3-0 to the over thus far in the year. They also went 60% to the over in their last 10 meetings with Texas A&M. Give me the Arkansas Razorbacks plus 5.5 in the over 48. Uh, next ball game, not on our big screen, but it is going to be 
Texas San Antonio versus Memphis, 3.30 p.m. East. The Memphis Tigers are minus three, total 65. Memphis is coming fresh off a nice win against Mississippi State. The Tigers are currently 3-0, and and they're in the top 15 in offensive yards per play from scrimmage. Running back Brandon Thomas has rushed for uh, 421 yards and three scores. The freshman is rushing for over 140 a game. They're taking on a Roadrunners team who played the likes of Middle Tennessee State and Lamar. Uh, now, Texas San Antonio, they've lost eight out of their last 11 ball games when catching the points. So if you're into historical trends, uh, I wouldn't like the Roadrunners here. Now, total-wise, both teams are 2-1 to the under through three contests, respectively. Give me Memphis minus three and the under 65. Uh, next matchup, uh, not on our screen. It is going to be Kansas versus Duke, 4 o'clock east. The Duke Blue Devils are minus 16, totals 57 and a half. Dukes won their last two straight. Nice victory over Northwestern this past Saturday. The Blue Devils are certainly uh, doing a nice job moving down the field. They're throwing for nearly 290 a game through the air, and they rank in the top 20 in rushing. Mateo Durant has 398 yards rushing already and seven scores. The senior is averaging over a buck 32 uh, rushing per contest. They're taking on a Kansas program who's failed to cover the point spread in all three of their ball games. The Jayhawks are allowing 36 points a game and 229 on the ground. Now, total wise, Duke could very well put this one over the total themselves. Uh, both teams' last two games both got over the number, respectively. I'm going to lean toward Duke, minus 16, and the over 57 and a half. Next matchup, not on our big screen. It is going to be Arkansas State versus Tulsa, 5 o'clock Eastern kickoff. The Tulsa Golden Hurricane, they're minus 14, number 62 and a half. Tulsa's 0-3 thus far in the season. 102nd in rush yards allowed per contest. This Golden Hurricane defense is giving up nearly 185 yards a game on the ground. They're taking on an Arkansas State ball club who's covered in two out of their three ball games on the year. And they also put up 50 points against Memphis. Wide receiver Jeff Foreman has 270 yards receiving and a touchdown. Meanwhile, Corey Rocker has 257 yards receiving himself along with four scores as well. Now, total-wise, Tulsa's last two straight both got over the number. I'm going to lean toward Arkansas State, plus 14, and the over 62 and a hook. Next ball game not on our big screen, UCLA versus Stanford, 6 p.m. Eastern start time. UCLA is minus 5.5, totals 58 and a hook. The Bruins are coming off a bad loss to Fresno State, where they gave up 40 points. I don't think this Bruins defense is good enough. They're allowing nearly 350 yards a game passing through the air. They're also 117th in defensive time of possession. They're taking on a Stanford team who won their last two straight, and they've really looked good offensively. As a matter of fact, the Cardinal put up 42 points against USC and 41 this past week against Vanderbilt. When it comes to the defense in this one, it's been... Uh, Real tough passing the ball against them. Stanford's holding their opponents to under 175 passing yards a game. Now, Caillou Blue Kelly, he has a pair of interceptions, four PBUs, and a pick six from that Cardinal secondary. Most schools saw their last two contests get over the line. Give me the Stanford Cardinal plus five and a half and the over 58 and a hook. Next matchup. It is going to be uh, Kansas State versus Oklahoma State, and that's a 7 p.m. Eastern kickoff. The Oklahoma State Cowboys are minus 6, totals 46. The 3-0 Cowboys have one of the better defenses in the Big 12. Malcolm Rodriguez has a pair of forced fumbles and 36 total tackles for the Cowboys. This Cowboy defense is holding their opponents to just 95 yards a game. They're taking on a Kansas State team who's 117th in the country in passing. Quarterback Will Howard's completing just 55% of his passes and has just one touchdown. 
Meanwhile, the Wildcats, the leading receiver, is averaging just 43 yards a game and zero touchdowns. Now, total-wise, both schools saw two out of their last three ball games stay under the number, respectively. Give me the Oklahoma State Cowboys minus six and the under 46. Next matchup, Kentucky, South Carolina, 7 o'clock Eastern start time. Kentucky's minus five and a half totals 49 and a hook. The Wildcats barely squeaked by Missouri and Chattanooga over the past couple of weeks. Uh, they're taking on a South Carolina squad who successfully covered the point spread in all three of their ball games. This Gamecock defense is in the top 25 in defense at time of possession. And they're also holding their opponents to just 179 yards passing a game. Jalen Foster has three interceptions out of the uh, secondary already. He's tied for first in all of college football in that category. And total-wise, Kentucky's gone 3-0 to the over thus far in the season. Give me South Carolina, plus 5.5, and, and the over 49 and a hook. Next ball game: Navy versus Houston, 7 o'clock east. Houston's minus 20, totals 48. Houston's on a two-game winning streak, 2-0 against the number in those victories. This Houston defense is holding their opponents to just 122 yards passing a game. This Cougar secondary has three interceptions already, and linebacker Donovan Mutant has 17 total tackles and a fumble recovery. They're taking on a Navy program who scored just 10 total points in two games this year, and they rank 128th in uh, offensive yards per play. Give me Houston minus 20 and the under 48. Next ball game I have for you. It is going to be Nebraska versus Michigan State, 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. The Michigan State Spartans are minus 5, totals 51 and a half. The undefeated Spartans are also a perfect 3-0 against the spread. Sparty's beaten the likes of Northwestern and the Miami Hurricanes already. They're also one of the best rushing teams in college football. Kenneth Walker III, he's rushed for 493 yards already and scored five times. The junior is averaging nearly nine yards a carry and well over a buck 60 a game on the ground. Meanwhile, defensively, the Spartans are giving up just 17 points a game. They're taking on a Nebraska club whose only two victories came against the likes of Buffalo and Fordham. Their defense is also giving up over 155 yards a game rushing. Now, total-wise, Michigan State saw two out of their last three ball games get over the number. I'm going to lean toward the Michigan State Spartans, minus five, and the over 51 and a half. Next contest, it is going to be North Carolina versus Virginia Tech, 7.30 p.m. Eastern start time. The UNC Tar Heels are minus 12, Total 63. UNC is on a two-game winning streak, and they also put up 59 points in both of those victories. The Star Heel offense is in the top three in the country in yards per play. And they're led by wide receiver Josh Downs, who's got 399 total receiving yards and four scores. Running back Ty Chandler, he's also averaging 7.2 yards a carry and over 107 yards a, a game rushing. They're taking on a Georgia Tech squad who lost two of three this season, including a one-point loss to Northern Illinois. The Yellow Jackets have struggled to stop the run. They're allowing over a buck sixty a game on the ground. Total-wise, Georgia Tech has seen eight out of their last ten meetings with the Tar Heels get over the number. Meanwhile, UNC's 2-0 to the over in their last couple of ball games themselves. Give me the Tar Heels minus 12 over 63. Next matchup, West Virginia, Oklahoma, 7.30 Eastern kickoff. Oklahoma's minus 16.5, numbers 59. The 3-0 Sooners are in the top 10 in scoring on average per game. Spencer Rattler's completing 75% of his passes, and he's responsible for nine total touchdowns. Meanwhile, defensively, the Aggies are holding their opponents to just 83 yards a game, rushing. Benito, Thomas, and Winfrey, they each have two and a half sacks apiece. They're taking on a West Virginia team who's 120th in defensive time of possession. Meanwhile, offensively, they're just 86th in rushing the football. 
when it comes to the scoring in this one, eight out of the Mountaineers' last nine meetings with Oklahoma got over the line. The Sooners also saw two out of their last three get over the number themselves. Give me Oklahoma minus 16 and a half in the over 59. Next matchup I have for you, it is going to be Florida Atlantic versus Air Force, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. The Air Force Falcons are minus 5.5, totals 52. But as good as Air Force is running the football, their offense somehow is still 65th in the country in offensive yards per play. Meanwhile, defensively, they struggled to defend the pass in certain spots. They're currently 93rd in pass yards allowed per game. They're taking on an FAU team who likes to air it out themselves. Nikosi Perry's thrown for nearly 900 yards, along with seven touchdowns and no interceptions. Meanwhile, defensively, the Owls are in the top 15 in defensive time of possession. Now, total-wise, both schools are 2-1 to the under thus far in the season. Give me FAU plus 5.5, under 52. Next ball game. Hawaii versus New Mexico State, 8 o'clock Eastern start time. Hawaii's minus 17, totals 58 and a hook. The Hawaii Rainbow Warriors are on a two-game losing streak, 1-3 against the spread in their four contests overall for the season. This Hawaii offense has struggled to run the football. They're 104th in the country in offensive rushing. Meanwhile, defensively, the Warriors are allowing over 35 points a game. They're taking on a New Mexico State team who successfully covered the point spread in their last three straight. The Zaggy defense also has eight takeaways already, including six interceptions. DJ McCullough has a pair of interceptions out of the secondary. 13 total tackles for the defensive back. When it comes to the total in this one, both schools saw two out of their last four ball games stay under the number. I like New Mexico State plus 17 in the under 58 and a half. Next contest, Indiana versus Western Kentucky, eight o'clock east. Indiana's minus nine, total 63. Indiana's two losses on the year came to very good football teams. This Indy defense is still holding their opponents to just 183 yards a game passing. They're also in the top 35 in the nation in yards allowed per play. Ryder Anderson has 18 total tackles and a pair of sacks for the Hoosiers. They're taking on a Western Kentucky program who throws the ball an awful lot, but averages only 75 yards a game on the ground. Meanwhile, defensively, they're 128th in the country in stopping the run. Look for this big Hoosier O-line to kind of push these guys around a little bit. Now, total-wise, the Hilltoppers went 2-0 to the over in their two contests. Indiana's 2-0 to the over in their last couple of games themselves. Give me the Hoosiers, minus 9, over 63. Next contest, UAB versus Tulane, 8 o'clock east. Tulane's minus 4, totals 57. The Green Waves just 1-2 on the season. 114th in the country in defending the pass. Tulane's allowing over 450 yards of total offense a game. And they're also giving up over 5.9 yards per play. They're taking on a UAB program who's holding their opponents to just 188 yards a game passing. They're also in the top 20 in the country in defensive time of possession. Keandre Swoops has a pair of interceptions along with nine total tackles and a pick six. When it comes to the total in this one, UAB saw four out of their last six meetings with Tulane get over the line. Meanwhile, the Green Waves currently 3-0 to the over for the season themselves. Give me UAB plus four in the over 57. Next contest, it is going to be Cal versus Washington, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The Washington Huskies are minus seven, totals 46. The Huskies are throwing for over 305 yards a game. Pretty good job moving the football through the air. Meanwhile, defensively, these guys are in the top five in defending the pass as well. Jackson Sermon leads the team with 21 total tackles. They're taking on a, a, a Cal team who lost two of three and failed to cover twice during that stretch. The Golden Bears are having a tough time defending the pass. They're allowing nearly 320 yards a game through the air. 
Now, total-wise, nine out of Cal's last ten meetings with Washington stayed under the number. Meanwhile, the Huskies on the other side are 3-0 to the under uh, thus far for the entire season themselves. Give me Washington minus 7 and the under 46. Next ball game, USF versus BYU, 10-15 East. Brigham Young's minus 23, totals 53. Storm and Mormons are 3-0 to start the season, 2-0 against the number in their last couple of games. The Cougs are allowing only 16 points a game. Keenan Pilly has 31 tackles and one and a half sacks. They're taking on a South Florida team who's lost two of three and ranks 110th in passing. The Bulls are also 117th in offensive yards per play, really struggling to move the football. When it comes to the uh, total, BYU's 3-0 to the under thus far in the season. Give me BYU minus 23 and the under 53 points. Next contest, Arizona versus Oregon, 10.30 p.m. East. The Oregon Ducks are minus 28, totals 58 and a half. The 3-0 Ducks are in the top 30 in rushing. C.J. Verdell has 289 total rushing yards and three scores. The junior running back is averaging 5.9 yards a carry. They're taking on an Arizona team who hasn't won a football game in a really long time. They're 0-3 thus far in the season. And they find themselves coming fresh off a two-point loss to Northern Arizona. The Wildcats are 122nd in offensive rushing, 104th in yards per play. Total-wise, seven out of Arizona's last ten meetings with Oregon stayed under the number. Both schools are also 2-1 to the under for the entire season, respectfully, uh, respectively, and respectfully. Give me Oregon, minus 28, under 58 and a half. Next ball game, Colorado, Arizona State, 10-30 East. Arizona State's minus 14 and a half, totals 45. But despite a couple quality wins for the Sun Devils, they failed to cover the point spread in all three of their contests this year. They're taking on a Colorado team who holds their opponents to just 197 yards passing a game. This Colorado defense is also in the top 25 and fewest points allowed. Nate Landman has a forced fumble, three PBUs, and 27 total tackles for the Buffs. When it comes to the total in this one, both schools are currently 3-0 to the under. Give me Colorado plus 14 and a half and the under 45. And with that, guys, we're going to jump into our next and final matchup. Oregon State versus USC, 10.30 p.m. Eastern kickoff. USC's minus 12, total 62 and a half. The USC Trojans are in the top 20 in offensive time of possession. They're also throwing for nearly 300 yards a game. Drake London has 29 catches for 375 yards and three scores. The junior wideout is averaging 125 receiving yards a game. Meanwhile, defensively, USC is allowing only 102 yards a game on the ground. They're taking on an Oregon State team who's 102nd in pass defense. They've also lost seven out of their last 10 head-to-head -head meetings with the Trojans. And total-wise, eight out of the Beavers' last 10 meetings with USC fell under the line. Both schools are also 2-1 to the under this year as well. Give me USC minus 12 and the under 62 and a half. And with that, guys, now it's time for our quick pick recap. Power to you by my website at brockpage.com, where we went 2-1 and in our three premium sports picks on that website in week three of our college football tier package picks. I like Appalachian State minus 7.5 over 58 points. Charlotte minus 2.5 under 56 and a hook. Wake Forest plus four under 67. Syracuse plus six under 52 and a hook. Utah State Aggies plus nine over 65. Miss, uh, Mississippi State plus two and a half over 56. Army Black Knights minus eight and a half over 51. Boston College plus two and a half under 59. Notre Dame plus five and a half over 46 and a hook. Ohio plus 15 over 47 and a half. SMU plus 10 over 64. Texas Tech plus eight and a half over 61 and a hook. San Jose State plus three under 63 points. Ball State plus four and a half under 56 and a hook. 
Washington State plus 14 and a half over 55. NC State Wolfpack plus 10 under 47. I'm also leaning toward the Iowa Hawkeyes minus 23 under 44 and a half. Purdue Boilermakers minus 11 under 55 and a hook. Iowa State slight uh <laughs> Iowa State Cyclones minus 7 under 48. Maryland minus 14 under 67. Louisville minus 2.5 under 62 points. Michigan minus 18.5 over 51 and a hook. Arkansas Razorbacks plus 5.5 over 48. Memphis Tigers minus 3 under 65. Duke Blue Devils minus 16 over 57 and a hook. Arkansas State plus 14 over 62 and a half. Stanford Cardinal plus five and a half over 58 and a hook. Oklahoma State minus six under 46. South Carolina plus five and a half over 49 and a hook. Houston Cougars, Houston Cougars, I said. Once again, Houston minus 20 under 48. Michigan State minus five over 51 and a hook. North Carolina minus 12 over 63. Oklahoma minus 16 and a half over 59. Florida Atlantic plus five and a half under 52. New Mexico State plus 17 under 58 and a half. Indiana minus nine over 63. UAB plus four over 57. Washington Huskies minus seven under 46. BYU minus 23 under 53 points. Oregon minus 28 under 58 and a half. Colorado Buffaloes plus 14 and a half under 45. Before I give you my next and final free pick for the video, one final reminder that we went 2 and 1 on our three college football tier package picks on BrockPage.com this past week. Give me USC minus 12 and the under 62 and a half. And with that, guys, now it's time for our shout out of the day. And that goes to AJN, who said earlier this morning, Brock, great work. And with that, guys, that's going to do it for me. Don't forget to check me out on BrockPage.com. If you guys do end up getting a membership here today on that website, just keep in mind, you're going to get billed the day you sign up and then the first of every month uh, if you continue to opt in. I always tell folks, the earlier in the month you sign up, the better. So if you do end up getting a membership here today, you are going to get access to that content all the way through the end of September. But most importantly, guys, got to thank you for joining me right here on YouTube. I really hope you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great free information. And with that said, guys, happy Tuesday to you. Best of luck to you. And I look forward to seeing you later on today on my website at BrockPage.com.